welcome back all of you nana here and then we are in the next day's program on this e business inventory implementation so now go there and share the screen mm -hmm. <clears throat> here we go there look at the worksheet now <clears throat> E business inventory training. And then uh, we have the worksheet over here. Right. Let me open it up. Now we are into the replenishment techniques. Actually. So there are five techniques which are there. The first one we have completed. So we call them as replenishment techniques. Actually. So these replenishment techniques are there. Many companies will now go only for min max, but there is a big problem on this one. So there are three types of stocking, which you have to do. Right. If you go on then have a look at it. <clears throat> if you go to the inventory course documentation, I will now go to the min max planning. Min max planning, if you open it up. So here, near the work area, you won't have uh, a sub-inventory which is having sufficient space. So you move it from the main sub-inventory into this shop floor sub-inventory using min max. This is a, a sub inventory level min max. But if the main sub inventory itself is also would exhaust, get exhausted on the stock, then you buy it from a supplier. So this is where the min max fails it. So here, uh, uh, if you're going to keep 1000 stock and then let us say it is getting exhausted in about, let us say, 20 days' time, then we had again make a purchase out of the supplier and then another 1000 will not buy. So people, instead of doing it, what happens is they will now buy a huge amount, let us say, 10,000. So once when you buy 10,000, at least for three to four months, there is no need to again go and then make a purchase. But tell me what is the problem of buying huge amount? Anybody? Can you make a guess now? Right? There's a problem. The huge amount you're going to buy and then keep it on your main store. What is the problem? <clears throat> and there will not be any problem and then you'll have to, what happens, run the production without any problem. But there is one guy who will be weeping like anything because of huge stock lying on your store and then uh, this is you are saying four months or five months stock actually can you make a guess anybody can make a guess now which is the what is the problem of a huge stock okay, nobody is able to make a guess now right? so i will tell you it's yeah, yeah. tell me Chandra. maintaining that stock in the sub inventory maintaining that stock maintenance is not a problem maintenance is not a problem there is only one guy who is going to weep like anything because of a huge stock there <laughs> maintenance is not a problem you have a four to five months of stock so production will now keep on going without any, any hitch at all Ramesh yes tell me you're telling something uh, it's a cost uh, maybe exactly maybe, fantastic uh, beautiful Ramesh but Ramesh is saying it is the cost right? so much of a money is invested and then they are all lying as an ideal stock actually so the man who is going to cry is what the owner you're keeping 10,000 stocks and you're saying that in the next four months you're going to consume his money is locked, actually. So whenever I, the, the biggest problem with the consultants is what? They set these parameters or the min-max to a very high level. So that what happens, they will not be questioned at all why the production has stopped or anything like that. So if you do like this, what happens? You will not be having any problem. You know, have production will not be hampered. But owners will cry like anything. And there will be so much of a raw material lying on the inventory. And then crores and crores worth of raw material will be lying idle. And then they are expected to be consumed actually. So this, this method doesn't suit every company actually. Min max doesn't suit every company. So the next method is a very risky one actually. But people go for it. Right? People go for it. And then uh, in, uh, in India, the India tobacco company has now gone for it. That is called reorder point planning. So there are three types of stocking. One is a minimal stocking. One is an optimal stocking. One is a maximum stocking. Min max will ultimately end up in maximum stock because of the people afraid of what happens is setting up a low, low, lower figure and then if the supply doesn't uh, supply on time or something like that and then all these problems will be coming and then they will be supplying and then min max will ultimately result on a excess stocking. Right? But optimal stocking is the best and that is what the min max has been planned but nobody what happens uh, does this actually. Just to save their soul, what happens is they keep a big stock and then no nobody will be costing them actually. <clears throat> okay, fine. So min max is there. Okay, more, more to my... So min max. 
so min max planning is a not is is not a very excellent uh, technique for replenishment actually in some companies where the raw material cost is going to be huge right? but ramesh has beautifully told that it is a cost factor right as well as because of which what happens we'll be having this one. so reorder point planning is an excellent technique but it is very risky actually but some companies go for it <clears throat> reorder quantity is uh, what happens are uh, considering not only even for optimal stocking but uh, minimal stocking minimal stocking is the ultimate purpose of reorder point planning but it's really really risky actually <clears throat> and there are companies which uh, uh, succeeds on reorder point planning actually <clears throat> right so we'll now see what exactly is reorder point planning <clears throat> So here you go there. We now go to a document called reorder point planning. So the, in the inventory course documentation, we have a document called reorder point planning. I can double click on it. The beautiful technique, but very risky. And if you fail, then what happens? The production will come to a standstill. Actually, so we are now going to see this technique actually. So here the forecasted material, fine. So tomorrow, how much of uh, raw material will be consumed? Day after tomorrow, how much is going to be consumed? And then likewise, what happens? There will be a forecast. The forecast has to be 100% accurate. And then what happens? The lead time of the supplier also must be 100% accurate. So there is a lead time. So the lead time of supplying the material as well as the forecast, right? the forecast, right? that's called the demand during lead time is not even the forecast. So if these two things are not accurate, this technique will fail actually. Uh, 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 ITC Tobacco, uh, when I was conducting a training some uh, long time back, uh, people from ITC Tobacco came. They told that we only go for reorder point and no other technique because this goes for minimal stocking and they achieved it and they are still running on it now. Minimal stocking will now release your owner from a financial stress actually. Right? So they did it and then uh, they made all the requirement for that and then uh, it, it has been done beautifully actually. So there are certain companies, some uh, very big companies will be going for a reorder point type of a replenishment actually. So replenishment for not for maximum stocking, not for optimal stocking, but for minimal stocking. Right? So there is one. So we are going to go on and create an item and then start to do this now. So as and when I do, what happens, I'll do it now. I will show it to you. So let me go there and then let me log in now. I, I was discussing with them uh, for about half an hour's time after the class is over. Excellent way of doing things. Beautiful. Then. They told that uh, it needs a very high discipline and then they achieved the discipline actually for your point. So now we are going to log in and then this time we will log in via operations. Okay, fine. Operations is the vision one because the vision is a very good one. So we will log in via operations. <clears throat> So operations become right. So it's operations, and then whatever password has been given to you, use it. Now. I'm now using a welcome one two three, capital W. <clears throat> so tip of login. Let me go there. Go inside. Tables and noises. Tip on okay. So now. We are now going to set up the reorder point planning, and then I am in vision actually. So let me come back to our inventory and switch responsibility to inventory plus I, and then control end will not take you to the last responsibility. No, it's not the one. So I will not go there. Inventory vision operations USA. So use this responsibility. Inventory vision operations USA. I will not change the or change the or to what T03 now. I will not use T03. I hope that this is a vision. I am not very sure about it. So let me go there and then have a look at what uh, uh, set up org or what is the setup or org. <clears throat> org. Let me ensure that it is in the vision actually. The T03 and then give it a T0 and then give it a so it is ENV3. Click on find. So click on others and then have a look at the accounting information. Accounting information itself will not tell you whether it is a vision or not. So click on it. It is only vision actually. Vision, vision, vision. So it is a vision line of business. We have now created the T03. So if you have not done it, please create one org on the vision's line of business and do it because vision is perfectly set for purchasing also and manufacturing also. So here, uh, those two things are absolutely required. So ensure that what happens, you are having an org 
in the vision's line of business basically so just watch my video and then do it accordingly so in this t03 i'm going to work upon that so first of all go to the change organization and that and then change it to what you don't change it to master at all right do not change the auto master you are always your child or right? you change the working organization as a child or right? the child's master will automatically open so anybody can tell me t03 is master what is the master now? what is the master for t03 you know see how much you have followed me t01 no <laughs> T03, which is the master for T03. Now you are not followed it very clearly now. How I created it. So the master for T03 is V1. Right? The master for T03 is V1. Right? I know. Chain the R. I have no good items. Master items. Right? Because we are working on vision. <coughs> my, <coughs> my working org is T03. Now V1 vision operations is now opened. I will now say T01. I will now say 30. I will now say uh, uh, ROP, reorder point planning. Fine. ROP item. So this is ROP item. I will now say do that. Reorder <coughs> planning item. So go there as and when you fill up the item name and description, have a habit of applying a template. And go to the tools and then go to the copy form and then apply a template of purchase data template. Purchase template is the one. Click on apply. <clears throat> See if somebody has put some message, the group. No. Oh God, <clears throat> he's asking for the link now. Please. So the purchase item template is now getting applied. So I click on apply and I click on done. So this is not done. So what are you saying? He may not be having the right thing from me. <laughs> Good. Sanjay, can you open up your mic and speak now? Sanjay? So now, yeah, yeah, I, I was looking for the unmute button. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I am, I am able to hear you. Okay. No problem. So the item we are now applied the template. Having applied the template, what happens? You go to the purchasing. Here, however, reorder point planning can be only purchased from supplier. No other means of doing it. Now. We cannot do it from any other place, but except only from supplier. So all of the techniques we can do it from sub inventory. Fine. From the sub transfers, the move orders can be created. Here, move orders is not possible on the reorder point planning. We can only make a purchase order actually. Right? This technique can only make a purchase order. The beautiful technique. Minimal stocking, right? Minimal stocking it ensures replenishment at minimal stocking. But you must be very, very accurate on your forecast as well as in your lead time calculations actually. If forecast and lead times are wrong, this technique will not fail like anything. But if you do those things, this is an excellent technique. Owner will be very happy because he is spending minimal money for running the production. Actually, he is spending minimal money, and so his reorder point planning, he will be very happy. ITC Tobacco has satisfied the owners like anything. That is the way that has been done. Having done this, what happens? You go to the purchasing. Since I had to go to the pie, so I will now go on and give you this price for this. Give this price for this. And then if you have ACP module installed, then what you do is you go to the general planning model, planning model, and then give a planner also. The planner is required because ACP is now going to trigger a replenishment actually. So the one go to the MS MRP. So here it's okay. It is again fully for planning only. Next is what lead time. We go to the lead time. We go to the lead time. We go to the lead time now. Go to the lead time. So here, what is the pre-processing lead time? Now we place an order. We place an order on the supplier. So we place an order on the supplier. So here, once when you place an order on the supplier, so the pre-processing lead time is what? When the time the demand is felt to the system till purchase order is placed is a pre-processing lead time. Now, now the demand is felt actually at the time. Now we started to create a purchase requisition, then a purchase order. So once when the purchase order is approved, there's a pre-processing lead time. The processing lead time is nothing but supplier's manufacturing time plus delivery till date. So he may be manufacturing it, 
or otherwise you'll be buying from a bigger supplier and then giving it to you. So the total time taken by him till he delivers the date is called the processing lead time. The post-processing lead time, the time taken to what move the goods from the gate to the what happens to inventory. It is only applicable only for heavy items like what happens. Iron ore has come in a uh, wagon. Right? Some 50 wagons have been uh, parked in our uh, complex actually. So we are going to unload it into, into, our, into our inventory you know, yard now. So post-processing is applicable only for heavy items, right? not for pen and pencil. You are now buying it and then from the gate to inventory, it will not take any time at all. Right? So all the three times put together is called the lead time for procurement actually. Pre-processing lead time plus processing lead time plus post-processing lead time. So here, what I'm going to do is I'll now go there. <clears throat> I will not give the lead time. So pre-processing is the one. Post-processing lead time, I will not give 1.75. Other post-processing lead time, I will not make it as one. And remember, this can be done only manually as far as purchase item is concerned. If you're going to have a manufacturing item, then we have got a lot of methods to automatically calculate. So, but for purchase item, this has to be entered only manually. So the total lead time is what? 1 plus 1.75 plus 1. This is 3.75. The system approximates it to round of round it. No, round it. The ceiling rounding will not take you to four days actually. It will be taking you to four days actually. <clears throat> so it will go for four days. And then go with it. I will again go to the main tab region. <clears throat> the main tab region. So afterwards, what happens? I will not go to the planning tab region. I will not go to the planning, general planning tab region. So here. I'm going to make the inventory planning as what? Reorder point. It will not have I mean, max is a reorder point. And remember, only at the item level, the attributes has to be given because it is an org level activity. It is not a sub-inventory level activity. It is an org level activity. So the inventory planning method is reorder point. Planning. Here, the minimum and maximum will not work for reorder point, but the order quantity will work. The order quantity has got a different meaning as far as min-max is concerned. Here, it has got a different meaning. will not come to that later. So these costs will be taken care of by the uh, what happens the, the carrying cost and then order cost will all come under the plan, planning module actually. And will work great. But FLM will work. I'll not keep FLM on for another 50. No? I mean, 50 is the FLM on the going to keep it. Right? The fixed this is uh, the supply as well as fixed, the fixed order quantity supply everything will be coming at the planning actually. So this is be having an effective effectiveness as well as order quantity minimum and order quantity maximum will have some effectiveness. Minimum and maximum will not play any role at all. And what else? And then the source, you make it as a supplier. Make the source as a supplier. Right? It has to be sourced only from a supplier. Actually. It has to be sourced from a supplier. Actually. So make the type of supplier. Reorder point. Right? So this, I will be giving it later. Actually, These two these two figures, I will not give it later. So I will not give it the FLMS 50. Nothing else. That's it. The item is created. So the item we have, after applying a template, what I did is I went to the purchasing tab region. And then I given a list price because we have to buy it in the market now. We have to give the exact price here. Now. So after having given the purchasing tab region, fine with that. What? After having this, no fine with that. So I'll go to the general planning tab region. The general planning, I made the um, re replenishment technique as a reorder point with one FLM. Fine with that. What else? And then the MPS MRV planning, I'm not setting up anything because I'm not going to use the ACP as such. No. In the lead time, I have given the lead. And let's come in. So the item is now created. So T0130 or OP item is ready. I have the one question. Can you again split the, explain the lead time? What is the yeah? See, now you mean I am not value. triggering an ROP. I am not triggering an ROP. Fine. ROP replenishment. I am triggering it. So the moment I trigger it, what will happen is that it will now start to create a purchase requisition. Right? It will now start to create a purchase requisition. Then the purchase request will be coming to a purchase order, and then that will be submitted for approval. So once when the approval is done, what happens? Now today at let us say six o'clock, I triggered it. The reorder point planning. The ROP I triggered it. And then tomorrow at uh, noon, it is now the PO is getting approved. So this is the total time taken for what happens uh, uh, from the time the demand is felt in system uh, uh, and until the purchase order is approved. It's called the pre pre processing lead time. Got it now? And then now the supplier has got the order from the time what happens is going to manufacture it, or otherwise you'll not buy it from a bigger supplier actually. Till delivery, till delivery at gate actually. There is a processing lead time. The post processing lead time is applicable only for heavy materials like what happens iron ore. Uh, they're all coming in uh, railway wagons and then you're going to unload the wagons and then bring it into your yard. So at the time, what happens uh, the post-processing lead time will come. But if you want to go to pen and paper, we can very fastly bring from uh, gate to inventory. And they're not doing them. So post-processing is not applicable for lighter items actually. Only for heavy items is applicable. So the lead time for procurement is what? The pre-processing lead time plus processing lead time plus post-processing lead time. Is it clear? Any doubts?
please now it's like we ask because there are certain companies which is insisting upon this now fine they insist upon this and then you have to exactly identify from the supplier's time fine how, how, what is the pre-processing time all these timings you have to exactly identify and then put it over here because no, 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 this is no, no. your creation uh, PO approval PO approval till PO approval fine from the time the demand is felt till PO approval is pre-processing and this always in days or what? is always in days only is always in days all right. Good. Any other questions from anybody? <clears throat> Good. Fine. Now, let me assign it to the organization. For the tools, and then I go to the organization. And this need to set up every time for our ROP? Once, once in a uh, while, you have to set it up. Right. Is, 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 item is set once. That's it. Afterwards, uh, there is no need to... Again. No, no. What I want to like, the, if we are planning ROP, right? Yeah. So, in that case, this particular tab has to fill, I mean, these three values has to fill every time, or can we leave but it? That means what? Now, I have set it. After one week also, it's going to be the same one. There is no need to set it at all. Right. Yeah, yeah. But this is required setup or what? Yeah, it's a required setup. Whatever I told, everything is required setup now. And if you okay. don't do the setup, it will not work at all. So first thing is what? After applying a template, you go to the purchasing and then give a list price. Right? And then afterwards, what happens? You go to the general planning tab region, make it to the ROP point, and then these two will now come to you a bit later. And then you know, set up a FLM. Right? The other things are not applicable for ROP actually. And then MSMRP also, this has to be set if you are driving ROP via planning. Then this also has to be very proper set. Then afterwards, you go to the lead time and then set it up. Fine. All the these setups are set up. Last question. And the last question, sorry. Ah. If support that the PO is not approved within a one day, so what is the impact? Impact is what? It is getting delayed. Yeah. The, so, the the process level because... 1.75, you are supposed to, what happens, meet all these things. If there is a delay, then ROP, the whole ROP replenishment may even fail, actually. That is what I'm saying. Now, man. If there is any delay on any of the parts, that is a, is a very, very risky one. ROP is really very risky, actually. So, so how do ROP is... understand? Huh? The procurement is delay. Reorder point is the delay. System if there is a delay, delay, production will stop. Because there is no raw material at all. No? The raw material from the supplier is not coming on time. Okay. The last okay. I will tell you about how uh, tobacco, uh, ITC tobacco is operating. I will tell you. Fine. They, there is no delay at all there. Nothing happens now. Right? I'll tell you about how they have done it. Beautifully, they have done it now. Right? And there are certain companies in the world that they insist only upon uh, what happens uh, this uh, ROP only. Right? Because their raw material consumption is very huge. In which case, what happens uh, if ROP is the best technique for them because they can uh, minimally stock. Minimal stocking is very much possible, but they have we have to enforce discipline on every fact, every fact. You go to the tools, and then I go to the organization assignment. Let me assign it. And D zero one three zero is now getting assigned. Correct. The next thing is what the forecast comes into picture. Now it is now three point seven five days. It is now going to take four days time for us to get the material. Right. The pre-processing plus processing plus post-processing is one plus one point seven five plus one is three point seven five. So in four days time, we are going to get the material. Now we are going to see about how much of material raw material will be consumed these four days. So there, the forecast comes into picture. So we go there, and then we, will know, we are already changed the organization to our, our organization, T03. <clears throat> so T03 is the one. Go there, come on, we'll wait, go there. And then we'll now give the forecast. Now, right? <clears throat> so I will now say go to the planning. We go to the forecast, <clears throat> forecast, and then go to the sets. So planning forecast set to the navigation where we are going to say how much of material will be required in the next two, four days. Fine. The forecast has to be very accurate. The lead time has to be very accurate. These are the two factors which contribute to the ROP success, actually. So double click on it. Fine. If you double click on it, what happens? Go through an error because what happens? The ACP has to be set for this one. Advanced supply chain planning. And then that is coming under Oracle Master Scheduling MRP. Fine. Oracle MS MRP. They call them as MS MRP. So if the planning is not set for the org, it will not work at all. It is not set for the org. So what you do is you go there. You switch responsibility to manufacturing. You switch responsibility to manufacturing. So here in vision, there is a problem. So I'm able to see the manufacturing vision operations. You will not be able to see MA if you write, you will not be able to see it. So what you do is you go to sysadmin now, right? sysadmin. <clears throat> I go to sysadmin now. I go to system administrator. I go to the security, user define, and then query operations. You query operations. You query operations. And then here you query again, you go to the query mode, and then query manufacturing. Manufacturing, I'm going to make a sub-query. So here you will now find a end date there. Right? 
vision has put an end date so that nobody, people normally do not use this manufacturing responsibility at all. So remove the end date, then only you'll be able to switch over to manufacturing vision operations. Got it now? You have to remove it. I already removed it, and so I'm able to go there. For the operations user, query for the sub-query on the manufacturing, and then remove the end date, then you can go there. Okay, so for it, I will switch responsibility, alt W, but then MA, if you put it, I'm able to see the manufacturing over here. Manufacturing vision operations. Now, I'm going to set up the planning parameters for the T03 R. Change R in this place, in the manufacturing vision operations, change R to what? T03. Let me go on and put it. T03. So here, I go to the material planning, I go to the setups, <clears throat> and then I go to the parameters. So the parameters. This is the one which is required for what? Working on our forecasting, actually. Forecasting will work only when the planning parameters are set, actually. Material planning, setup parameters, and navigation, fine and So here, you'll be getting a screen now. This will be fully explained in the AACP training. <clears throat> right? AACP training, it will be fully explained. What I do is I allow, so simply put a click on net purchases, actually. Right? Something I'm changing here. So I'm making a change on this one. So I then commit. So put it in a tick mark on net purchases and then commit. Now the planning for this is now created actually. The planning parameters for the org, T03 in the top, you can see. The T03 part, you know, the concurrent is running now. It's called maintain repetitive period. So the planning is now made enabled actually. And click on OK. So T03 is now enabled for running. Now we can very well do the forecasting for this. <clears throat> we can very well do the forecasting for this. Close it. Yeah, go to that. So let us now switch responsibility back to inventory now. I'll come back to inventory. Now let us go there and then set up the forecast. <clears throat> so go to that what's called planning. I go to the forecast and then I go to the sets. So planning forecast to the navigation and then first change the organization, change the organization to your organization. Thank God is a T03. You change it to your organization and then afterwards go there. Right? It is arc specific actually. Thank God. So it's arc specific. So Planning forecast set is all specific and double click on it, it will now open up because it's already set. So go there. I will now create a forecast set actually. And T01, I will now say underscore forecast set underscore. I will now say uh, forecast set <clears throat> for <clears throat> T03 on. So give a proper description. So bucket type, how do you want to forecast? Right? On a day wise or a week wise or a month wise actually. I mean, normally it will be day. Level is item, and then uh, you won't uh, go for any other levels actually. And then this is the consumption of the forecast actually. Fine, this will be fully explained in the planning. And how do you go? To, because planning is uh, basically for what demand supply balancing. And so whenever you forecast, it has to be consumed by the actuals. No? Fine, you have outlay percentage, outlay update, and then uh, backward days, forward days. Everything will be fully explained. Fine. Don't touch it now. Leave it as it. So go there. The forecast set will have multiple forecasts now. Now I am in September now. Fine. I will now say uh, August. August 23 forecast. Fine. Click on this now. Fine. It is a September 23 forecast. Uh, September 23 forecast. And then October. Fine. October 23 forecast. So you will normally have what happens every month will be having one forecast actually. Month wise forecast they normally make. Or otherwise they will have different, different region wise forecast. East zone, south zone, north zone, west zone also they will not make. So forecast can be on a date wise or otherwise on a region wise or otherwise what happens, I will now forecast my AC car, my what happens, the non-AC car, my deluxe car, likewise what happens as per the model wise also it will be there. So it can be in very many ways actually. So I now made only three months. So your forecast set will have multiple forecasts. And then so the planning time phase is not important in the ROP, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Planning time is not important in uh, not important. In, in ROP, it's not important. Okay. And, but ROP is a very sensitive one for forecast, actually. Now, I will now go to the September forecast, and then I will now say every forecast will have items, actually. So, forecast set, one forecast set will have multiple forecasts, and then every forecast will have item. I keep my cursor on the September day and click on the forecast item. Okay. So, in this case, what I'm going to allow put, put only one item. Fine, one item. I'm going to put it. So, let me do one item. One item. So, likewise, we'll have multiple items. <clears throat> So come in. It is a four level hierarchy actually. So likewise, what happened? Click on the details. I'm going to give it details. So go there. Day wise, I'm going to give it. Now. I go there. Date. Control L. Enter. It will not tell you today's name. Now. So today, I am expecting the raw material will be consumed by 100 quantities. Down arrow. And then go there. 24th is coming. So 24, I will now make it as 150 now. And tomorrow, 
I'm expecting the raw material to be consumed in the production by 150. You know, fine. That is how uh, the thing based upon the sales actually, based upon the sales, we are now giving the forecast actually. Uh, or you will know they will not talk to what happened the sales engineers and do you know? Then 200 and go the down. I will not say 250. You know. <clears throat> This has to be very, very accurate. If this accuracy is lost, then ROP is failing. But, but these are approximate, right? Approximate accurate, means... accurate now. Do you know there is a demand planning module called D Mantra by an Italian company? So if you feed four years of your last uh, profit and loss statement as well as the balance sheet and other uh, data be it, fine. Let us say uh, you're you're no you're not doing it, let us say uh, 150 million. <clears throat> Uh, as a sales, a total sales in the past four years. And then if you if you feed the past four years data in the fifth year, if you go and then ask it to project how much it will be based upon the past four years pattern, right? There are so many seasonality index, everything is there. So it will analyze everything and then it will now project how much you'll be able to sell this this year. And then they found the actual results, right? There, there are the forecasted results is uh, let's say 180 million. And then if you see the actuals, it may be 175 million. It is very near, almost 95%. It is now actually matching it. Beautifully, it is done now. Fine. Forecast has to be very near to the actuals. If that is the case, then it is an excellent model. So Oracle, what they did is they bought the D Mantra company. Now D Mantra is part of Oracle. So after they bought the D Mantra, they are not selling the demand planning module at all to any of the customers. So even if they ask for, they sell only D Mantra. D Mantra is such an excellent technique. And then it has got curve smoothening. And then there are so many retrofitting, so many futures are there. So with which it very accurately predicts. Only thing is what? There should not be any major change. And based upon the past four years, if the pattern is same on your working, then it will now give you the projections. <coughs> As a sales order demand is not uh, not taken into consideration of the ROP. Right? Consideration. It is taken, huh? it is consideration. taken into consideration. Oh, yeah. Sales order demand. Fine. So you know, a customer is asking after two months time some uh, some uh, some item, so that will be considered. So, uh, so uh, how long how long since for how many months the sales orders will be counted in one ROP run? It all uh, depend upon how you are doing it. Now, if you are doing a days bucket, I am doing it. Now, you can even go for a weekly or a period. Bucket. So in the elections, have you seen the opinion poll given by people now? Fine. So let us say uh, you are having uh, uh, let us say a state assembly. I mean, two seats are there. So uh, uh, election commission has banned the opinion polls actually, but they give the opinion some four months before they don't ban it. Once when the election date is announced, they will not allow you to do any uh, any opinion poll. So uh, they will now say out of uh, 200 seats, 180 seats will now go to party X. This opinion poll will now give you, and then you will now see actual results will be somewhere around 170. Beautifully done. These guys are predicting it excellently actually. The opinion polls are really doing wonders actually. They take what happens as samples from various uh, types of people, and then uh, they evaluate and then give it to you. So that is called cephalogy. <laughs> See, here also, it is not a psychology, it is a pure max actually. Cephalogy, cephalogy, not psychology. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Cephalogy is a branch of statistics. Is so. <laughs> so here also, the D mantra, what happens, uh, does this beautifully actually. And then, give, and then if you really see, the pattern will be exactly the same only. The actual consumption will also be like this only. So this is where your forecast comes into picture. So I have now given a forecast for five days. And remember, what is our lead time for supply? Anybody? How much is the lead time for the supply? If I place an order, how much of, after how much of time it will be coming? 3.75. 3.75 is four days. Four days. So what happens in the next four days, I'll be consuming 100 plus 150 plus 150 plus 200. So it comes to 600. So my consumption of raw material in the next two, four days is going to be 600 actually, as per this. Got it now, fine? So my, this is called demand during lead time. So this is the demand during the lead time. The lead time was this four days, 3.7 phase four days. So the, this is the demand, expected demand of the material, of the particular material in the next four days actually. So having done this, what happens, you go there. So it's a four level, fine. Every forecast will have a four, multiple forecast. Every forecast will have multiple items. And then every item will be having multiple details. Fine. Forecast set, forecast, item, and detail. It's a four level hierarchy, which has to be done very properly. The consumptions comes under planning only. And consumption will be coming under planning. So planning will say, uh, you, out of 100, if you have, what happens, the actual order is 98. 98 is consumed, two is left behind. How much is not consumed of the forecast? Right? The consumption is not. That will be done, analyzed with the planning module. Right? 
So if the consumption is going to be exactly same, it is excellent forecast. The forecast is really, really excellent actually. <laughs> so go that. I come it, I go that. Close it, close it, close it. This activity is now complete. So we are not done the forecasting. That is called demand during LTEC. DDLT is not done. Then afterwards, what happens? There is a safety stock requirement for every day. We'll have a, so what happens? We have to have at least that much of a safety stock which is required actually. That much of a safety stock. So we will have to calculate the safety stock. So I will not go there. I will not go to the planning and then I go to the safety stocks. So DDLT is ready. Demand during late time is ready. Next is what? Safety stock. Right? Double click on it. We're going to have to go for it. Click on new. And then click on the item. I will not say it's a, what's called a T0130 and then give it a tap. Is it coming? Then today's day. Okay, later. So today, I need at least 32 quantities so that the production doesn't stop. And then go there, click on it. I will not shift F5. Go there, click on it. I will not say 26 times. Go to say no. Fine. 26. Fine. ASCP 23. Fine. Go to say 45. Go there. <clears throat> Shift F5, go there. I will now say uh, uh, 5th of October. No, I will now say 05. Mm -hmm. OCT, 23. Right? I will now say 0. So, a safety stock will be defined like this. Right? Can anybody tell me what will be the safety stock requirement for 25th actually? There is no entry at all. Can you make a guess now? What is the safety stock required for 25th of September? Mm -hmm. Just make a guess. So just to increase the difference from that one. I want a number. number. I don't want any English answer. I want a number. 13 divided by 13 divided oh by. Oh, God. <laughs> I want an answer. I do not want a formula now. Achha, bol chi, bol chi. Let me let me tell you. There 57. is no such formula in the 57. I'm telling, I'm telling you. 32, then 32, 32, uh, 24, 25. So. No, no. Uh, it's a very simple uh, one. It is not a normal formula. 40, it will be for about 40, I think. <laughs> Around 57. There is only a simple 57. Number. It is 32. 32. <laughs> so only when there is a change, there will be an entry here. 23rd, it is not. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, okay, 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 okay. So I thought it is a linear interpolation. No, no, no. So if there is a change, there will be an entry. Fine. Now tell me what will be the safety stock record for 4th of October? 4th of October. It will be 45. It will... 45 is very correct. And then hmm. what will be the safety stock record of 6th of October? 6th of October, it will be 0. Zero. That means what? They have defined the safety stock only for from 23 to 05 only or 23 to 04 only. That's what it is. But this way of manually doing it is not uh, or was not at all done in the company. Company do not do this. You try to make a safety stock manually, they don't do it. What they do is they know the, they know the demand of every day. So they will not take 10% of the demand as a safety stock. So I will now reload the safety stock by calculating it from the demand actually. I will not go, go to the tools. I now made it manually and then I saved it. I go to the tools and then I go to reload the safety stock. Tools reload, I'm going to do it. Now if I click on tools reload, I'm now reloading it. What is, reload? Okay. What is the forecast now? Fine, go there. So here we have got three forecasts now. Fine. August, September and October. August and October do not have any entry. If it drop down, only September will come. Whatever is having an entry, that only will come. Fine. It will not take it up from those days. And then mean absolute deviation is really very difficult. Asahi glass is following this one. MAD is a very, very complex method. And then if the end, end client is asking you to do it, then you have to go for many, many statistical formulas for this. It's really, very good. You will really become mad, actually. My what are the other options? options? What are the other options there? Yeah, there's another option is user defined. So other option is what user defined? User defined and oh, user defined. Add. So we'll now go for a user defined only. Many, many companies use only user defined, but if they insist upon you have to go on and learn the empirical way of calculating the statistical method. There are so many documents that are available. If you go for MAD and then query on the what happens in your Google, even if you go to Oracle also, Oracle is also having a lot of documents to calculate via MAD actually, the safety stock. So it's what I was trying to So here, the safety stock percentage is still. And then in forecast, why it is going for September 23? There is, a, there is a only a forecast which is having entry now. Right? There is no, the August 23 is not having any entry. October 23 is not having any entry. So it's not coming. If they have entry, they will also come in the list of values. Actually. Right now, I have made entry only on September, September 23. So uh, as, as you said, as you said, uh, the, 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 the safety stock figure is not being given manually. It is being calculated yeah, from, the forecast, calculated. from yeah. the forecast. Fine. Forecast, yes, now, forecast. my question is, who, what is the guarantee that manually entered forecast? You have entered the forecast manually. 
What is the guarantee? You are manually for entered. So there is no guarantee at all. It must be accurate. Fine. That is the ultimate activity. So Oracle has Oracle has not yet come with a model to calculate the forecast from the existing sales order uh, demands. Yeah. No. 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 It is only for the demand. See here we have a demand. Tomorrow. Uh, today one hundred. Tomorrow one fifty. Uh, next day one fifty. So we already oh, have the forecasted that's demand that's available here. From that's there only the ten percent is coming up. Okay, the figures that you have inserted into the uh, demand. forecast, mm, forecast. Uh, yeah, forecast demand could yeah. have been calculated from existing sales order picture also. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Existing right. Sales so you have to calculate it out the outside the system and then manually insert it in the forecast. Yeah. Is it not? Yeah. So same thing up to ten percent. The service level is there is one inventory optimization technique that that is using the service level actually. So that uh, when you learn the inventory optimization technique, then the service level also can be calculated. Actually. Since I don't know that module, I'm not putting it. I'm putting it. Click on again. So I'm passing on this. What happens? The reloading of the safety socket. Click on again. Any other doubts? Good. Fine. Click on again. And then click on submit. I'm going to submit it. Fine. Click on submit. I'm submitting it. So go there. Click on no, no. So I will now go on. Go to the view. Alt V and then R and then enter. So it's now running. Fine. Alt R. <clears throat> Alt V R enter is what is valid. Alt R. I am not doing it. So click on the reloading of the safety stuff and all that. Click on the view output of it. So it doesn't have any output. Doesn't matter. So what we do is we will now come back here and then we will now requery this. I will now requery it. I will now go to the query mode. So go to the F1 mode. I will now say is the T zero one three zero percentage and then let us now query it. So we got that. What happens? The recalculated value. Now tell me what is the safety stock. Required for twenty fifth of September. There is no entry at all there. Why? My question is why? Why there is no entry for twenty fifth of September? Anybody? There is no entry for twenty fifth of September at all. So what is the reason for no entry on twenty fifth of September? Remember our demand is what hundred one fifty one fifty two hundred two fifty. For the five days. Yeah, accordingly, it has given you the safety stock. Exactly. As many forecast as many safety stock. Yeah. So twenty fourth and twenty fifth are having the same demand actually. So that is why twenty fifth is not having any entry at all because twenty fifth is having the same twenty fourth one. Only. So only when the change, only when there is a change, there will be an entry on the forecast. Right. So now ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five are not coming out. So on the next, what happens? This is for the one, two, three, four, five, five days. Now, five days. So one, two, three, three is also there. Five, four, and five. So the demand during What happens? Uh, the what is the max of safety stock for the next four days? Actually, can anyone tell me what is the max of safety stock? Four days. Now this is five days actually. From twenty three to twenty seven is five days now. Right? So it will now calculate the max of safety stock. And what is the max of safety stock? Actually, it is a ten, fifteen, fifteen, twenty. So the max of safety stock is twenty actually. Right? Because for our lead time of three point seven five is now four days. So the max of safety stock is what? 10 15 15 20 so all, all these four entries what happens 20 is the max actually any doubts the very complex one so you have to what happens understand very clearly so we reloaded the safety stock based upon the forecast and then 20 is the lead time max safety stock got it right so the safety stock is now ready your demand is also ready now we will not run the what happens the planning so here in this case what happens the stock level is going to keep on coming 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 and you will be running the reorder point manually so this is the rop level which will be given by the company actually so once when the company says that at this point you have to trigger so once when the stock level has come what happens it will be triggering the rop so once when it trigger the rop it will not take 3.75 days to come so the stock level will be going like this and then this is the lead time what happens it will be coming and then it will be touching this area and then even if it doesn't come at the time the safety stock will protect you actually The safety stock will protect you so that what happens? Your stock level will never go to zero at all. The production will not stop at all. What is now? So any doubts on this now? Fine. I will now run the ROP now. Now let us say the, now the time has come. Then I have to run it. So only when there is there, what happens? It will be running. So I will now go to the planning. I will now go to the reorder point planning. I am going to run it. So double click on it. Let me run the reorder point planning. Fine. So the safety stock is ready. The demand during lead time is ready. Fine. Double click on it and let me run it. So all the order point planning. So there is a risk of forecast here. All the forecast will come there while you are reloading the uh, whatever safety stock. Only whichever is having an entry that is coming here, everything will come. Okay. So everything is coming. I will not choose the September twenty-three. Okay, okay. 
and the remaining parameter i'm leaving it as this and click on okay so click on okay and then let me submit it no i go there have a look at that concurrent <clears throat> so the reorder point planning is running it is like a opinion poll in a election about the accuracy of the opinion poll actually <laughs> like quiz what happens your pre processing lead time and then the forecast must be very accurate and there are so many techniques to what happens derive the forecast properly Now that I will come up, I will not click on the view output. I will click on view output. So I will not go there. I will click on the view output. So the view output is coming. I will go there. Click on it. We will not see the output. Okay. The lead time, lead, lead time demand is what? Four days. It is hundred plus one fifty plus one fifty plus two hundred is what? Six hundred. The total lead time is three point seven five days. And then the safety stock, it is not calculated. Some systems will not take only twenty, but some systems will not see the whole month, and then it will not take up the maximum actually. i don't know how to make it now find out to make it uh, i have seen in some systems it will be 20 only in some systems it is coming as what the whole month's maximum actually so the reorder point is what uh, the demand during lead time plus max of safety stock that is 620 way is required actually on and quantity is zero supply is zero the total available is zero so on and quantity plus supply minus demand minus open demand is there coming now on and quantity plus supply minus open demand will be the total available So based upon six hundred eight, what is the one level, and then it will not subtract. Supply in the in the supply bucket. What are the uh, uh, what are the things which are considered? Is purchase yeah. order? Yeah. yeah, purchase orders, purchase yeah. requisition is also considered. Both means for the same PR, same item, for the same item, same item. Purchase requisition, purchase order. Once yeah, the PR is the supply actually. Now once the PR is converted into pure, then that PR is not calculated. No, not for this now. Fine. Previously, one month before you already done it, you made a PR. You made a PO, so those will be contributing to the supply for this current run actually. Got it? So one month before you have made a PO, and then it is not yet received, and then that will be considered as a supply. Actually. But the PR, we are PR behind the PO. I, I, I am not able to explain you my question. There is a I'm, PR. I am not yet created any PR at all. The PR is not yet created from this now. Fine, six fifty corners. The PR is not yet created. Fine, it is only an output. It is a simple output. Just come now. Fine, it is a simple output. The PR is not yet created at all yet. For calculating the safety, it will not consider the previous supplies, previous demand, fine, and then the on end. So supply on end plus supply minus demand will be the what I mean output of it. Got it now, fine. This twenty five varies, and uh, people say that uh, we can even uh, what happens uh, constrain to only the demands demand times uh, max. Now it is now taking the whole forecast max actually. I don't know how to do it, fine. But uh, there may be some setup, so fine. Some uh, profile options may be there. What happens? You try, and then if you succeed, please educate all of us in the group. Actually, clear us now. Now, what happens? Now the company is now giving a restriction. Now is saying that what happens? Whatever may be the reorder quantity, I do not want to order more than five hundred at any point. Whenever you run it, you should order. You should order only five hundred. That's what they say. I I do not want to order. Should not go below that. So at the time, what happens? They go there. You're going to make a modification. I click on it. Now make a modification. I click on it. Now go there. I will now go to items. And then I go to org items. I go to org items. Okay. Items. Org items. Okay. Because it is a org controlled attribute actually. Okay. So double click on it. Now query our item. So you got three zero one three zero. And then give it a find it out. And here I go to the general planning tab region. So here the company is saying the max is five hundred. It is now pegged at five hundred. That means what? Whatever may be our output of ROP, it cannot exceed 500. Now let us now rerun this now. Let us now rerun it. So I'll go there. You go to the planning, and then I go to the reorder point planning. I'm running it now. So click on it. The forecast is what you go there, and then I put your September 23 plan. Let us not. Let us follow this. Everything is there. Click on OK. So click on submit. This time, what happens? It will not be 650, but it will be 500 now. It is now pegged at 500 actually. Because company is saying, I do not want to order beyond that. Whatever may be the requirement, go there. Click on the view output now. So it's fine. Sometimes supplier will not say whatever may be the thing which you want to order. Because if I don't transport 800 quantities, fine. My carrying cost will be more than the order cost. So minimum order required is for 800. Fine. That is what the supplier is saying. So we'll now put the minimum over here. 
Close it. I will not remove the maximum. I will not put the minimum. This is the supplier's minimum, actually. So whatever may be your output, in our case, what happens? It is now 625. But the output will be see, 800 because supplier is saying, if you don't give me 800 orders, then what happens? I will not do anything at all. I will not go to the window. And then here, I will not go there. Click on it. I will not go to the planning. Reorder point planning. Now, it will be 800 actually. Click on it. The forecast. Set them up and then click on it. So all the items which are there, the forecast will all be given output. So click on submit. Go there. Have a look at the output. Click on it. Refresh it. So once when you refresh it, it will become. So now you can see that reorder point report is now coming up. Click on it and then click on the view. So here it is now 800 actually. In reality, it will be a mixture of both the supplier's minimum and then our maximum actual. And in reality, this is what happens with this setup. There will be a mixture of both actual. Go there, click on it. You know how it Go the price. So it will be, let's say, minimum, what happens, the supplier is saying 600, the maximum, uh, we are saying 800 or whatever it is. So if you put it, then the output will be always within this band only. The output will always be within this band, actually. So this has got a meaning. I will not remove both. I will not save anything about it. No. Now, till now, what we have seen is the system has now given only a output for you to take an action. Now, let us now run it for automatic action. You know, right? So, we'll not go there. So, let us now push the data into the interface tables of purchasing. And double click on it. You know, run that. What happens? Go there. Go to the forecast. And go there. I have not choose the forecast. Now, it was only giving an output. And go there. Restock is equal to yes, is now going to give a replenishment output action automatically. Now, if it is no, we are now manually taking a replenishment. Whereas, if it is yes, the system will be pushing it into the interface tables of purchasing automatically. Item is already having a list price, remember. If the list price is missing, it will not be uh, doing it all. So click on the So click on all of that. We'll have a look at the concurrent now. So this is not done now. So click on the view output. Here, all dark. Uh, view output now. Now, what happens? The 650 is the output. So the system will not say that it has not pushed into the interface table. The only thing is what? The restock will be asset. Now, what you do is you'll now go to the purchasing and then pull it into the base table. Actually, you'll now go there. You'll now go to the purchasing responsibility and then pull it into the base table. Close it. Go there. Close it. And there. Switch responsibility to purchasing. Okay. PU. If you put PU automatically, it will be coming. Okay. In purchasing mission operations, you say. So I will now go on then perform a rec import. Okay. Requisitions. Uh, there is no such import command here now. Okay? So let us now run the concurrent. Okay? It is Alt VR, Alt N, Enter. Okay? There is a keyboard shortcut. I will again tell you. Okay? If you go there, Alt V, and then R, and then for the new consumer new request is Alt N, okay? Alt N, and then Enter. Now go there. I will now say Rec Import. So the data has already gone into the interface tables of purchasing. We will now run the Rec Import. So import source, the data might have come from inventory, from order management, from planning, etc., etc. But as of now, what happens? The data would have come only from inventory. If it drop down, you will not find the source as only inventory. And then initiate approval after a import because the demand has now come from inventory, and so there is no need for approval in the purchasing department at all because purchasing department is responsible for a spend authorization actually. So spend authorization is not required because inventory's ROP technique is asking for material. And so there is no need for anybody in the purchasing department to approve it. So it will be initiating an approval automatically on this. So click on OK. So, and you should run it. so click on OK and then pass on the parameters and then click on submit. So once when you submit for it, then you will know. Mm -hmm. Click on fine. No. So refresh it. Or keep on refreshing it. Alt up, alt up, alt up. So once when the rec import is now completed, so you'll now find that the data will be available on the base tables of purchasing, and then you can now further process it actually. So since this requisition import is now running for the first time, it is now taking a longer time actually. 
So the ADS is a company. It's called Applied Digital Solution. So this is basically responsible for module to module integration. And then this is running excellently. And so Oracle has purchased this. Now ADS is no more an external company. Applied Digital Solution is now part of Oracle. Oracle has purchased this company. Fine. They have written all the interfaces between module to module actually. Go there. So the requisition import is completed. Fine. Go there. Come on. The remaining is okay. These are all will be taught in the purchasing training. So click on the view output of it. Now fine. Keep the cursor and click on the view output. So once on the view output, fine. Number of approved requisition created is one actually. So we'll not go there and then have a look at the requisition of fine. We'll not go and have a look at the requisition. Now close it now. I will not go to the requisition, requisition summary. And then let me query on the item. The item is what? P0130 percentage and then give it a tap. Click on fine. <coughs> So the system has now created one requisition, price at 10, and then 6,560 is the quantity, and that is now created. Now, we have to convert this requisition into a PO. Fine. This is the demand. The demand is approved. Fine. This is the approved demand, actually, because there is no need to uh, anybody to approve on this one. In this case, I'm going to close it now. Close it now. We'll now go to the auto-create area. Auto-create is nothing but a pool of approved requisition. Fine, go there, click on it, open it up. And then here, uh, we have a buyer name, and then the ship to name, everything is coming clear, everything. Fine, click on clear. So we are now clearing everything and then put the item number over here. Zero, three, zero. <clears throat> three, zero. Percentage the and then click on find. So auto create is nothing but a pool of approved requisitions. Fine, click on find. You will now find this one. There's a requisition number, which is not on. So select it and then we will now auto create in the PO. Fine, create standard PO. Fine, I will now make it automatic. Fine, click on automatic. I will now use one of the existing stuff here. Advanced network devices will be there. Advanced network devices. And then Fresno is a site actually. So Fresno, and then click on here. I put a supplier and supply site. And then I'm going to convert this requisition into a PO. So while you're pushing the demand from inventory into purchasing, there is no need for any approval because ROP is need of it. But when you are creating a purchase order, then what happens? It needs to be approved. The income is actually. The so here, what happens? You go there, and then I go to the shipments. Click on the shipments, and then here, I don't know. Click on the receiving controls. I know, say it's a direct delivery. It's okay. Thank you. Okay, now. So go there. Click on it. I will not try to approve it. So I will not click on initiate. Six five seven five. I don't know whether the approval is now or automatic or not. Fine. Click on approve. <clears throat> if it is automatic, it will be getting approved. So line one schedule one freight carrier uh, value UPS specified is uh, inactive. Or invalid actually. Line one schedule one friend carrier. So line one, I'm not going to go to the shipments now. Fine. Line one, the carrier value they have given. Fine. Kaya, no status. Fine. Because people are now setting up. Carrier, carrier is not there. It, but probably it is in the terms, terms button. Go to terms button. One second. I'm going to go to the status there. Nothing is there. Uh, receiving controls, nothing is there. And distributions, I will not go there. The distributions fine. I don't have any carrier button now. Close it now. Fine. No, go to the trans button at the bottom. Trans. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is there any carrier? Remove the carrier now. Fine. No, remove the carrier because carrier is not giving a problem now. Commit to this one. Because it's not asking for the extra data. So click on approval. It has not gone for approval. Fine. Click on submit. Fine. Good. Good, Sanjay. That uh, the term button, the UPS carrier is not having a problem. Because it needs some more setup. It is approved. Now we go and then receive it now. 6575. Mm -hmm. So the pre processing time, processing time, uh, post processing time, everything is coming to picture. I will not go and receive it. So go to the place. I will not go to what? Receiving. Fine. Go to the reception. And then paste the purchase order. Fine. First of all, choose the organization. Fine. T03 is the one. And click on it. So click on OK. I will not put the purchase order. Number. And paste it. Fine. Give it a tap. And then click on Find now. We are going to receive it. Number. Submit it actually. So click on find out. So close it. Uh, and then I'm going to select it. Now here, the purchase order, the receipt you're trying to transact exceeds the days yearly or late tolerance. It's only a note, actually. It doesn't matter. We can ignore it. So how many days you had to receive it yearly and late? So those settings are coming in the picture. So there's a note. Fine. Click on OK. Now fine. Go there. So click on OK. And then give a commit. Fine. Please commit. So go there. So the sub-inventory has to be put. Fine. We will not receive it in the moment. The sub-inventory is actually uh, not receive on the main, actually. So cut is coming. So by which whatever the transaction is now complete. Fine. Now we can see an RTP running upon it. An RTP will run. Fine. So on every RTP, fine, whenever an RTP runs, fine, receiving transaction process is running. Upon completion, the activity of receiving gets completed. So now the replenishment of this item into our main sub-inventory is now completed via PR and then PO. 
But again, here what happens is now completed. And then you can even see the stock of this item in the listing. In the destination sub unit, you can go there. And then have a look at the stock market. So close it. And now go to the switch responsibility to inventory now. Inventory. Inventory. Oh God. Right. W N B. Right. So the inventory responsibility. I will now go to the online availability or the online quantity. <clears throat> T03 650 has been received now from the contract. Now to the item for T01 30 percentage and then give a tap and click on find out. This item is not received. So the replenishment activity is now complete. So the real challenge on ROP is what? The demand during lead time. Find the forecast must be perfect. The safety stock must be perfect. So that and then the lead time must be perfect. Actually. If any of them or wrong or everything is wrong, ROP will fail it. ROP will ensure minimal stocking, remember, because this is a demand during lead time only we are buying. There is no 3.75 days. So the demand for the 3.75 days only we are buying it. And then whenever the stock will now go up, and then whenever it touches the ROP point, you, you will be given the ROP point. At the time, again, you have to fire. You fire the requisition, and then the requisition will be PO, and then PO receiving, and then the stock will now keep on coming, coming, coming. It should come at this stage. If it doesn't come at this stage, gone, go in the, go in the, fine. <laughs> the total thing is gone, actually. It's a very risky one, but uh, what ITC Tobacco has done is what? They have asked all the suppliers to set up the ancillary units very near to ITC Tobacco, Calcutta. Right? Everybody has set up. And so there won't be any problem on the lead time, actually. The lead time will be perfect, actually. And if they fail on the lead time, next time, the next order will not go to them at all. Fine. It's a very strict instruction. That even one failure, what happens is they will no more be a supplier. To so they ensure that what happens is whatever days they have committed, everything is really very much what happens is met with actually. So by which we can achieve what the minimal stocking. Minimal stocking means what owner will be very, very happy actually. Owner will be very happy because with the minimal stocking, you are not interpreting production at all. Production is going on smoothly. So this completes the reorder point planning. If you have understood it, can you put a green tick? I want to see about how many of you understood it actually. In the reaction pane, if you can put a green tick mark, I'll be very happy to see that you understood it. And if you, if you have to configure it, we have to work with the suppliers, the forecasting team, and then everything. Fine. So, that, so by which what happens, then only you can do it actually. Great. Fine. So I have put a tick, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so now, now uh, are you going to take give a break now? Or? I'm going to take a break now. Fine. I'm, I'm not going to go over coffee break now. I'm aware, uh, and I cannot talk more than one hour now. <laughs> so, so, uh, 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 so, what is the next topic, and when will it start? Next because topic I have is a... next replenishment technique, actually. So, it is now six thirty-five. At six fifty, I will now begin the next topic. Acha, I have another meeting, so I'll, I'm dropping. Okay. Okay, okay fine. Yeah. Uh, it's clashing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I'll get the video right for later. Yeah, yeah, everything will be uploaded there now. Right? It will be getting uploaded. Okay. Everything will be uploaded. Now. Okay. Bye. Rajesh, I will now make you the co-host now. Uh, so that people should not leave actually. Man, so, that, what happens is really so I'll now go for a coffee and then come back. And then afterwards, what happens, we'll now go for the next one. Kanban replenishment this is again a very big topic actually. 6.50 will now begin. 6.50 p.m. India. Fine, Srinivas, you know Indian time, na? fine? Indian time. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. 6.50 p.m. India is the one. Fine. Great. Okay. And Chandra has also understood. And Deepan Kur has understood. Okay. So those who put a green tick mark, please keep a note of them and then note down the names so that when you go on and try to configure it, they will be of a great help to you. Because reality, it will be even much more complex. So only an example, we have done it now. Fine. In reality, when you are configuring it, it must be very perfect actually, ROB planning. Mm -hmm. If you are asked to put only an ROB planning for replenishment, you have to be very, very perfect actually. Fine. Talk to these guys, they will be of a help to you. Fine. Because I cannot uh, understand your business needs actually. Fine. It will be very difficult for me at this age. But hey, Ramesh, what about you? Ramesh is a big man, actually. He must have understood it, actually. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I have to go through once again. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. Ramesh. So Ramesh is also a big person, and then he is uh, having an excellent uh, what happens the perspective, actually. So he'll be of a greater to you, right? So you also use use him for your uh, what happens the interaction. So we'll be back at 6:50 p.m. for the next replenishment technique.